Welcome back to the Wizard's, uh, well, another road trip, a Wizard road trip. This time around, we're not really headed anywhere fantastic on vacation. We're just doing a weekend getaway. We're actually headed to Hoovy's Lake House. His family has a lake house, and he just got a Cobalt 343, almost a yacht. It's a, it's a boat. It's a huge boat, very awesome boat. We're going to go check that out and spend some time at the lake. While we're on our trip there, I thought I would share with you guys some of the ins and outs of running a shop, some of the crazy things we do with just acquiring parts. We'll focus on parts or supplies or things of that nature. We did a crazy customers video before, but this time around we'll do crazy parts shipments. Some of the crazy stuff that you wouldn't even think of to run a shop. So we'll start with local parts, and there has been countless, countless times that I've ordered a part, and it's just been completely, randomly wrong. You got a customer who's got his car, her, his or her car in the shop, they need it back by the end of the day, or maybe in the morning. You waited a day already to get a part that took a day to get, and you open the box, and it's an old one, a core charge that somebody, I've had this happen, an alternator. I open the box and it's a dirty old one with some greasy shop rags wrapped around it. And you're like, how in the world is that going out to the public? And what happened is the box made it to the store and instead of sending it off to be rebuilt, they just, someone who unknowingly puts it back on the shelf as stock. So. Someone like me sends a part order through and I get a core to put on somebody's vehicle. I've gotten brake pads before that are old used pads wrapped in a shop rag. This, there isn't any certain brand or company. I've used them all and they all have these issues. And you say, well, that's with parts that have cores or whatever, you know, that's just an issue you have with those. But even with brand new parts, I would say no matter who you choose, including the dealer, you have a 5 to 10% failure rate on your parts. You're going to install the part. It's going to last a month or a week or even a day and fail again. Now, most businesses that sell parts will have warranties to cover this, but it's still an inconvenience to the customer. It doesn't matter where it's made or where it's been built or what country it's from. And you would think, oh, well, just buy dealer parts. That solves the problem. No, it doesn't. I've gone online onto the parts order websites to the people who there's CarQuest, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, all these different companies and they have there's really only two or three part makers out there. There's Dorman, there's A1 Cardone, there I mean there's several others, but they supply the parts to all of your favorite parts stores. So while I buy from O'Reilly's, they're better under the AutoZone and guess what? They both got their parts from the same manufacturer, from the same warehouse. So that doesn't matter. I have gotten parts from dealerships. I open the, it's a dealership box, nice packaging. You open it up and you actually look at the part and it'll have a doorman stamp on the part. They themselves from the dealer got it from the doorman factory. And they're rebadging it, repackaging it, selling it to you as OEM quality parts. So, Keep an eye on that. Make sure when you open the box, what are you really getting? And be careful when you go to open the box and say, what is going on here? Immediately take it back. Don't wait around. Get it, get it handled. I have dealt with that more times than you would imagine. The next category we'll go into is eBay parts. They're quite handy in finding parts that are hard to find and uh, you know, with, with Hoovy, he buys all these weird cars or strange cars or old cars that's hard to find parts for DeLoreans and, and Maseratis, Aston Martins and stuff. There are specialty parts suppliers for these, but if you want to save a little cash, you can go on eBay as long as you're willing to wait. It's a modern-day salvage yard. eBay is your modern-day salvage yard. Some of the issues you deal with with eBay is I might find the part exactly what we're looking for. 
but if the person the customer is in a hurry it's not happening you're gonna wait a week to a week and a half to get your parts from eBay hey, you're gonna wait on the person selling the part to get it in the mail it may be three or four business days before it even finds the part finds itself in the mail and you call them and say or you email them or message them through eBay where's my part at and they're like uh, actually we haven't even got it in the mail yet sorry it's like okay I have a customer waiting you know they don't care they really don't care you can pay for expedited shipping through some of the eBay stores it doesn't matter the shipping might be faster but the time the delay between the order and actually getting it in the mail there's nothing you can do there's nothing you can buy to speed that up you're at the mercy of the seller there's also a lot of confusion on eBay between left hand and right hand on parts. I've found that. In the, in the mechanic world, you generally say driver or passenger. That completely eliminates the left, right, L, R, U, uh, left, right. You know, it completely eliminates driver and passenger. But that's not the way the parts are sold sometimes. You'll say left hand part. Well, it's left hand if you're standing in front of the car and looking at the car, but it's not left hand if you're sitting in the driver's seat. I mean, you get the part and you're like, oh, crap, it's the wrong side, or, I mean, that frequently happens. You even email the seller beforehand, is this, are you sure this is left hand, passenger side, or right, or, you know, driver side, or whatever. Yes, they say yes, it is. And then you get the part, and it's not. And they don't care. It's, oh, sorry, ship it back, we'll give you the right one, or we'll give you a refund. And you're out the time, and you say, look, I had a customer waiting on this part. And they're like, I don't care. It's nothing against eBay. It's really the sellers. But that's just some of the issues you deal with eBay, getting parts. I have actually ordered parts before that says, let's say, 130 bucks with $10 shipping. Okay, so you order the part. Then you get an email or a message from the seller. Oh, I took this thing to ship it to you, and they actually want 40 bucks to ship it. Uh, I'm going to need some extra money. You're going to have to cough up the extra. I'm like, no, that wasn't the agreed upon price. You told me $10 shipping and 130 for the part. Well, it's either that or I don't ship it to you. So, well, keep it then. I, I don't put up, put up with that stuff. It's kind of like if I were to put a part on your car and say it's going to be 200 bucks, and you show up to get your car, and I say, oh, it's 300 bucks. That's not fair. That's not a fair way to do business. And frequently you get the wrong part. Uh, you order a water pump. I've, I've ordered actually on a 928 Porsche, I ordered a caliper, a good used caliper for a customer. And I got in the mail a motor mount for that car. I'm like, what? So I contact him and I'm like, oh yeah, we did a mix-up. You got you got some other guy's part and he's got your part. It's going to take a week to get this all sorted out. And it's just kind of a pain. It's some of the crazy stuff that you deal with, with dealing with eBay. Okay guys, sorry about that. I had to readjust my camera. I had some issues with the camera. We got it fixed. The next crazy parts situation that I had is actually when we did Apollo 911 for Tyler both when he purchased this kit and also when I received the kit it was an understanding that it was a comprehensive kit you you spend all this money for this setup and you purchase your own LS motor he purchased an LS2 we went to install it and there's stuff missing there's kind of like gray areas and question marks about what's the next step how does this tie in with the Porsche wiring and how does this all work so I you know so I contacted the company several times and it's like, what is, what is you guys' recommendation here? You designed this kit, you've built these cars, what's the next step? And it's kind of like, they say, oh, it's kind of a gray area, it's whatever you want to do with your car. It's like, no, it's not what I want to do with the car. You built the kit, what am I supposed to do next to make your kit work with this car? Well, we found that you'll have to just research the wiring and see what works best for you. Like, why is this what works best for me when Hoovy just spent thousands of dollars for this kit that's supposed to be comprehensive, complete, 
for start to finish deal. I didn't. I never understood that there was a lot of modifications that I had to make that weren't even in the instructions, and that the people at the company Renegade Hybrids were just like, "Oh, yeah, I guess you might have to do something like that." It was, it was kind of a wishy-washy deal. And it, the car turned out okay, and except for the the issue he had on the racetrack with the oil baffles in the oil pan, it was really it worked good. He didn't have any trouble with it other than that. And also, when I called them and I asked them about the oil pan and what kind of oil pan you recommend, they said they used to stock the oil pan, just to use the stock oil pan that came with the car. That's the way they designed the kit. And they even have an, an LS oil pan that had a shorter sump. That was what they recommended, so that's what I put in. Everybody out there wants to do an LS swap, but the, the bolting on is not such a big deal. It's the wiring and fuel supply, coolant, and uh, throttle by wire, getting that all working, all those different things, making it happy, getting past the, the VAT security system and pass key or whatever it's called. And it can be done a lot easier like in an Impala or a Chevelle or something like that. But putting it in a Porsche, it was very difficult. It's one of the hardest swaps. I've done several swaps, but that was one of the hardest ones I've ever done. And I think it would have been a lot easier if it wasn't for the crazy parts issues. It was the supply of the the kit and everything it was really crazy. The next crazy one I ordered, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want any liability or people coming after me or say a slander and different things like that, but I ordered for a customer a fully rebuilt Chevy 5.3 motor. The, I think it was an LQ9, I can't remember the exact code. It's the one that has active fuel management in it. The customer had no issues with the price. He was like, let's do it, go ahead and order the engine. So I ordered it, I went through the whole process. You know, you don't know really what you're getting until you've got it hooked up and gonna start it and run it. You trust that they've tested this engine, that they're giving you a good engine. Well, I got the engine installed and everything it ran okay, but every time you let it set for a little bit and you start it up, it would be a puff of, I mean, a big puff of white smoke would come out the tailpipe. And I, I called them and they were like, oh, so you didn't install it right or this or that. And I'm like, no, no. I said, I haven't even got it up to operating temperature yet. And because I see this smoke, I just turn it off. You know, well, you haven't let it get to operating temperature. No, I'm not going to because I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Finally, I took a spark plug out. Actually, I took all the spark plugs out. I have a borescope camera. I pressure tested the cooling system because I suspected a coolant leak. It smelled that way in the exhaust. Sure enough, on uh, cylinder number seven on the driver's side, which would be the rear cylinder, I got my camera in there and water is just coming in. It had a blown hand gasket right out of the crate. I hadn't even done anything hardly with it and it had a blown head gasket. If that's not bad enough, I called them and they, and they wanted me to pull the head off and pay me to pull the head off and send them this and send them that and they finally agreed that there was a mistake on their part. Go ahead and pull the motor and they'll send another one. And I said, okay, well who's going to pay me for this, this motor? I, I, this is not my fault. I have to pull this out a second time. I said, I charge $85 an hour on this particular vehicle. And they said, no, no, we don't pay that. We only pay you $65. I was like, excuse me? It's my shop. I set the rate. No, sir. With warranty, you get $65 an hour. That's all you get. I said, so you're telling me that I'm going to be forced to remove this engine a second time at a cut rate? That is when that engine right there is what soured soured me really bad on ever doing engines for people anymore. I don't I don't install rebuild engines for people. I don't care what brand you use. I don't care what kind you use. When they start telling me my shop rate, I'm like, bye. And the last one I have is actually that white Range Rover I had that I actually sold that one to the film crew when we were filming the reality show and they used it in one of the episodes, but I bought it, the engine was toast, so I ordered a good, a good engine, a good used engine, I was going to put it in, and I received it, I started taking it, taking it apart, taking the plastic off, and there was oil everywhere, and I kind of wasn't too worried about that, 
But I started inspecting the engine, and someone had dropped this engine. They dropped it on the cylinder head, the corner. It broke the valve cover, broke the head. I'm like, what? So anyways, I call them, and they say, we'll, we'll send it back, and we'll send you another one. I, uh, I sent it back, and a few days later, I got another engine on a truck, and I opened it up. It was the same engine that I just had. It had gone to a warehouse, got put back on the truck, back to my shop. I was furious. I mean, this is the kind of stuff when you're running a shop that you don't think about. You say, oh, it's easy. You fix the car, and you get the money, and it goes out the door. How do you explain this stuff to a customer? It's not your fault. You didn't do it. You didn't cause these issues, and now their, their car is going to be in the shop longer and longer and longer. So... In wrapping it up, guys, it's just some of the crazy stuff I've had to deal with over the years running a shop. Things you would never even think of happening. And I guess I've learned experience from here on out when a customer wants to do a certain job. I know in the back of my head what's really going to happen through this process. So, any tools I use, you guys are interested in buying or just seeing what kind of tools I use, check our Amazon affiliates below. Check our merchandise below and... There's stuff for sale there, and again, we're headed to the lake, and we're going to have a great weekend with Hoovy, and I look forward to making more great videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.